Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Route Learning series recorded in Train Simulator. Um, for this episode, I'm going to be driving a short run along a route that for the most part no longer exists, uh, which is the West Croydon to Wimbledon line in South London, and it's available as a freeware route from backdated train sim. Uh, the scenario that I'm using is set back in 1997 on the last ever day of operation for this route. Originally opened in 1855, the route was closed in 1997 to make way for the Croydon Tramlink. Um, the Tramlink uses some of the old track bed from this line as part of its route and was opened in the year 2000. Uh, backdated Trainsim, I think, have done a really good job of representing a route which has clearly seen better days, uh, with everything looking rather run down and well past its use by date, as you'll see as we drive along this journey. Um, it certainly creates an interesting atmosphere, and I really do quite enjoy driving along this route, although it is um, a very short run. It only takes something like 20 to 25 minutes to drive in its entirety. Um, the scenario that I'm using comes with the route and represents a full return journey, but I'm only going to be driving in one direction, uh, from West Croydon to Wimbledon for this video, and I might do another episode in the future uh, which covers the route in the opposite direction. Stops along this journey will include Wadden Marsh, Beddington Lane, Mitcham Junction, Mitcham, Morden Road, Merton Park, and finally Wimbledon, with a total journey distance of around six and a quarter miles. The train we'll be taking on this journey today is a two-car class 456 electric multiple unit. Um, built by British Rail Engineering Limited at Holgate Road in York, uh, these units were constructed between 1990 and 1991, first entering service on the 30th of September 1991. The final units were withdrawn in the January of this year. All class 456 units were formed of two coaches and they run on the 750 volts DC third rail electrification system. Each unit is around 40 meters or 130 feet in length and they have a power output of 500 horsepower and a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour though the maximum speed limit on this route today will be 60 miles per hour. The cab of this unit is certainly a very standard uh, British rail cab, but I'm just going to go through the setup procedure very quickly now. Uh, so I'm going to move the reversing handle into the neutral position and then reset the AWS self-test sequence. I'm going to press, I think it's Shift and E, or um, yeah, I'm sure it's Shift and E with these older units from Armstrong Powerhouse to turn on the driver safety device. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to press H to turn on the headlights to the driver's day position. Now press Ctrl and Plus to jump to the rear cab uh, so that we can turn on the tail lights at the rear of the train. And now jump back to the front of the train here, check the signal ahead which is clear, so I'm going to turn off the driver reminder appliance. And uh, now let's just quickly talk about the controls here, which um, for anyone who's watched my channel before, these controls will all be very familiar to you. Uh, but on the left hand side we've got the standard West Code three step brake. So you've got the released position, step one, step two, full service, which is step three. And there is finally an emergency position that goes further than that. Uh, just to the uh, top right of the screen there you can see the brake gauges. and the needle on the right hand side indicates how hard the brakes are applied so of course when that's pointing to zero the brakes are fully released and the higher that needle is pointing then the harder the brakes are applied. Uh, continuing around the cab here you've got the AWS reset button between the brake handle and the horn control and the horn control is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. <laughs> And then finally, if we continue around the cab here, you've got the reversing handle there, and then you've got the power handle, which is a four-step uh, power controller. Uh, so I tend to start in step one or step two, but you can very quickly go up to step four with these units to get the maximum available acceleration. Now I'm just going to open the window on the left-hand side, just because I prefer the sound with the window open. And then finally, we're going to jump back outside the train and just press the F8 key to scroll uh, very quickly through the destinations uh, so that we can set it to Wimbledon. So you press F8 to scroll up and F7 to scroll down. And this is a very quick scroller, so it's uh, very helpful when uh, you've got a lot of stations to scroll through. Ones with Common, West Croydon and Wimbledon. Uh, so yeah, we're now set up ready for departure out towards Wimbledon. Um, so in a moment, uh, we're just going to jump to another camera view and then head out on our journey.
As we depart away from West Croydon here, the speed limit is 15 miles per hour, though very quickly increasing to 30 at this speed post just here, um, with just over a mile to go to the first stop, which is Wadden Marsh. So I'm just waiting a few seconds, and as it's a short train, we don't need to worry too much about uh, travelling a long distance before we're able to accelerate after passing a speed post. And now going to accelerate to just below 30 miles per hour and then shut off the power, and we can pretty much coast uh, all of the way to our first stop. moment now we're going to diverge to the right away from the line towards Sutton which are the uh, two tracks to our left hand side there and then um, as we turn around this curve in a moment the speed limit's going to be increasing to 60 miles per hour but we're also entering a downgrade of 1 in 150 um, so I might need to use the brakes to control the speed at least until we've passed the uh, 60 mile per hour speed post. applied some light braking there uh, just to control our speed a little bit. Uh, in a moment we should be passing that 60 speed post, in fact you can see it coming up just ahead. Uh, but I'm not going to accelerate at this point as we don't have too far to go until we reach our first stop. In fact you can see the platform at Wadden Marsh Station just on the right hand side coming up ahead. We had around a third of a mile to go at the 60 mile per hour speed post. Now I'm just going to apply some light braking and start bringing our speed down. Um, you do have to be careful with many of the platforms on this route as they are extremely short. So we need to stop here at the S sign at the end of the platform, which is right by the platform mirror you can see coming up. And if you look at the platform, you can see just how overgrown and run down it's looking here. It certainly looks a lot different today now it's part of the tram link, but uh, I just love the atmosphere of this route with the way it looks so run down. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we departed Wadden Marsh Station, the speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Beddington Lane. We are still on a down 1 in 150 gradient at this point, which is helping us to accelerate a bit more quickly. Of course, we don't have too far to go until the next stop, so I can't accelerate too much. rounded the first left curve after Wadden uh, Marsh and now we've got the next left curve coming up at the end of this second left curve. We've got around two thirds of a mile to go and I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment shortly after entering this next light left hand curve. Once again, with Beddington Lane Station, we do need to take care of it, is, as it is a very short platform here. And we also need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform, uh, right by the platform mirror. Slowing down maybe slightly too quickly. Really don't want to be entering the platform any faster than a maximum of 20 miles per hour, though. And 
gradient does level out just here, so we're no longer on a downward gradient. So we should now be stopped in just about the right place. As we depart away from Beddington Lane, the speed limit is still around, well not around should I say, the speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, with around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Mitcham Junction, and half a mile to go to an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed restriction. See just coming up on the left hand side there the warning for the upcoming 15 speed limit. So I'm going to idle the power at this point and the speed limit um, itself comes into force around the area of the next signal. And you can see the next signal coming up just ahead with the green light there. So I'm going to start applying the brakes now to bring our speed down and ensure that I can get us down to 15 in time. So now we're down to 15, I'm just going to coast into Mitcham Junction Station and we need to aim to stop at the forecast stop sign which is just beyond the platform roof. Mitcham Junction Station is still open as a railway station in real life, uh, so we're joining the uh, route, I think it's the Portsmouth line, something like that, that goes towards uh, Horsham and Portsmouth direction. Um, but as I say, this is still open, so the tram route actually diverges away from um, this bit, it doesn't join the uh, actual railway, and it goes to the left of the station just here, if I remember rightly. to take note at this point we do have a cautionary signal at the end of the platform which is a single yellow aspect and so we should now be stopping in just about the right place So as we depart away from Mitcham Junction, the speed limit is still 15 miles per hour, uh, although it is quickly going up to 30 miles per hour at this speed post just coming up here. Uh, the signal had cleared to green uh, by the time that we were departing, and we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Mitcham. So just waiting just a few seconds to ensure the train has passed the 30 mile per hour speed post. We'll now accelerate up towards 30 and then I'll just shut off the power and allow the train to coast once again. The upcoming signal just here we've got around a quarter of a mile to go the speed limit will be increasing to 60 miles per hour just before our stop at Mitcham and uh, we're about to go back into single track once again I'm going to apply the brake just after we've uh, joined the single track section and you can 
now see Mitcham Station coming up just ahead. Once again, we need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Accidentally went up to full service braking for a moment there. Uh, this brake handle certainly very tetchy. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Mitcham, the speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, um, with around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Morden Road. For now, I'm going to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour, then I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast at that point. Uh, we've got a footbridge coming up just ahead, which leads into a light left-hand curve. Um, at that point, we've got uh, just over half a mile to go. For now doing around 50, I'm shutting off the power at this point to allow the train to coast. In a moment we're going to cross an underbridge and at that point I'm going to apply the brakes. So we're just coming up to that bridge now. Uh, we're going to be on a down 1 in 100 gradient um, as we head towards uh, Morden Road Station. And again do take care at Morden Road as it is a very short platform here. And once again we do need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Uh, I don't really want to enter the platform at any faster than a maximum of 20 miles per hour. You can see it coming up just after this overbridge here. So once again, we should be stopped in just about the right place. As we depart away from Morden Road, the speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, um, though it will be dropping to 30 miles per hour uh, shortly before the next stop, with around half a mile to go to the next stop, which is Merton Park. to accelerate up to around 35 miles per hour, uh, cut off the power and allow the train to coast at that point. And I'm going to apply the brakes as we enter this next right hand curve coming up. slightly on the late side there. I'm going to have to use some harder braking than I intended, but I should get the speed off before we reach the end of the platform. Uh, this is what happens when you don't practice driving a journey enough without the HUD. And I managed to reduce the braking back from full service, so we're going to have a much smoother stop right at the S sign here at the end of the platform by the platform mirror. Thank you. 
Departing away from Merton Park, the speed limit is 30 miles per hour with around three quarters of a mile to go to the next and final stop, which is Wimbledon. So I've shut off the power now at 30 miles per hour just to allow the train to coast. Uh, we should get a warning soon for an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit and the limit is down to 15 at the next signal. There's the 15 mile per hour Morpeth board. Uh, nice to see a truck that just spawned there. Um, I guess we've got teleportation technology now. Um, at least it's not quite as bad as my East Coast mainline video when I went straight through a bus at uh, over 100 miles per hour. Um, that was certainly an interesting experience. And just to mention that I'm hoping to do a full West Coast mainline run at some point. I don't know when I'll have the time to get round to it, uh, but I've done the East Coast mainline and I feel like that the West Coast mainline is the next sort of epic journey that I need to do. Uh, so yeah, I've got down to 15 miles per hour. Um, we're just coasting at this point. I'm going to slow down to 10 miles per hour as we enter the platform and then pull up to the uh, buffer stoppers. And I'll get my words right in a second. Pull up to the buffer stops uh, near the end of the platforms. Platform. I don't know why I'm jumbling my words so much there. And for anyone uh, who asks, because I've been asked in the comments, uh, certainly on some of my older videos, I don't technically script this. This is uh, live recorded um, when I'm doing the driving. Uh, the only part of these videos that's fully scripted is the introduction, uh, just to help me to know exactly what to say. pulling up to the buffer stops here. I'm going to stop just after they've disappeared at the bottom of the driver's window and so we should now be stopping in just about the right place and here we are arrival at Wimbledon. Um, so yeah I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video I do hope that you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like and subscribe um, for the latest channel updates then you can find me on Facebook uh, with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. And it seems in the last two years I've taken up photography as a hobby and people seem to quite like my photography. So if you would like to check that out, then please check out PTG Travelling on Instagram and I'll put the Instagram uh, link in also in the video description. Uh, once again, thank you for watching.